Yeah, it's me again talking now about P Data Hub, which is an initiative that started in Leeds to combine global P data sets. So, just like a quick overview, so um, the P Data Hub was idea came to life back in 2016 when there was a workshop in Leeds where uh, we invited researchers from different countries to think about their peatland data and how we can work together. So some of the outcomes from that workshop was like, okay, we want to create a hub where we can foster collaboration, think about how we can share data, as much data, but not just like short term, but also long thinking you know, long term monitoring. And think about how by combining these data sets, we can ask new research questions and provide uh, evidence for policy. So I will put a link to the to the website in a bit, but then so Big Data Hub as an initiative has two sides. So one is like the public side where you can see our director, directory of researchers and different projects. We're also showcasing the data sets, like for example, this uh, research, uh, this Pitland map. So you can access to Pitland data sets either created by the University of Leeds or with, uh, or with our partners. I'll go back. This is taking a life of its own. Uh, so one of the things, so we have the data packages and we have also a public, want to start a publication showcase. From a technical point of view, we uh, Pit Data Hub, like the database, it's a database that runs on Azure, it's an SQL database, and it's a web-based web secure application, which has a different levels of, depending on the users, it has different levels of functionality, and also it has a modular design. This was key for when we decided to design, for the design of the database, because we, during the, the first meeting, we realized like there's lots of data out there, but we can't upload and manage everything on one go. We need to agree on how to standardize it. So one of the things we decided is important to have a modular design so we can look at which types of data we want to upload to the database in a standardized format first, and then think about which other types we want to add. So like the, the, data, the database can grow. And so it's an example of what the, the database looks like once you log in. And I'm gonna give an example of how we work in partnership. So one of the things we did is like in partnership with IUCN, we developed a module for the Eyes on the Bog uh, project, which looks at um, what happens in the peatlands, monitoring peatlands, but it's like a citizen science initiative. And other types of data that we have is also, we can have wells and eyes on the monitoring side. So what, we have to make decisions. So we decided that we can call the peatland side at the landscape level and under that landscape level pit site, which you can see here, so it's a landscape level, you can have different uh, types of monitoring strategies. So we can have wells or surveys, or if you're using eyes on the bog, you can have the ROS roads or the surface level roads. And one of the important things we had to think about is because we were working with citizen science, so the people who work on ice in the book, that the field, what happens in the field, what you collect in your field sheets or whatever app you're using to collect data in the field has to translate into what you can see on, in the database. So this is an example of the field sheet or some people collecting data related to a ROS rod and how it looks when you put it in the database. And be, one of the things when creating this database also I mean, happens with all other types of applications is that you have to think about accessibility, how pe pe other people are gonna use the data. Because this is uh, the eyes on the book, it's a citizen science initiative, that module, the data can be made publicly available, but it also has an opportunity to keep the data hidden because we know people want to do some quality control before releasing it that is different to the data that people are storing in relation to the wells, because lots of it is done in partnership sometimes with um, companies like Yorkshire Water. So uh, the data has to be uh, kept under embargo for longer periods of time. And one of the things we work is like, 
uh, something that is really nice and useful when you go into a site and that is having photographs. So it's like showing here how um, for the Big Data Hub, we created a module to upload photographs related to a monitoring site. But it's not just photographs. We also allow uh, the functionality allows for 360 BR images. So if you have a headset, you can actually put your headset, your Oculus Rift, and then walk around your peatland site, which is kind of nice. And another bit of the functionality is that we have um, advanced search. So you can type different um, different search options. So for example, you can look at the site name or condition type, and then the search will uh, give you out some different types of data. And if you want to look like in this example at the photographs, it shows you the photographs which you can then download. Uh, some of the things that we've done, because this is, uh, we want people to use P Data Hub and we want it to be a community, community led initiative. So we have lots of videos and tutorials on how to upload information, how to access it, how to share data one to one, depending on what you're doing. And so if you are interested, you can, can visit our, our, our YouTube channel where, where all this, uh, each level of functionality is explained with a video. And I'll go back to my the previous conversation I was, I was talking about um, Elixir. So one important thing that uh, working on the development of this, uh, this initiative and the application for the data management is that I realized that it's very important to get to the community more training on research data management because we're all doing data management, but not in a structured way. And in particularly for me, this initiative was a bit different because with the eyes on the book, we're working on volunteers and citizen science scientists. So uh, I think it's very important to make them aware of their contribution, that not just the, uh, when we're working with volunteers, it's not just, uh, what, what do we call it? Um, parachute science where you go ask them to take the data and then you leave them so we want, I want the volunteers to make, make sure that they understand the contribution to the data collection analysis process and to value whether that what the information that they're collected is going to have an impact on science and policy and I think I was quick thank you if you want to find out more about P Data Hub, you can scan that um, the QR code and if you have any questions just let me know I'm here <laughs>